I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. I want to show you this powerful moment when a Trump supporter and podcaster by the name of Steve Deese realizes while he's broadcasting live that he may be in a cult and he reflects on the lies by Rudy Giuliani and Jason Miller and specifically the fact that Rudy Giuliani just filed a declaration under penalty of perjury in a federal court admitting that the statements that he made about the elections in Georgia and how he defamed Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss, the Georgia election workers, was indeed just that, defamation. He admits that he was lying. He stipulates to the facts in the complaint against him brought by Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss. And here, this Trump podcaster, Steve Deese, goes, I'm the mark. I'm the mark. At some point after being treated like a schmuck over and over again by these people in Trump's world, I'm the mark. Watch this powerful moment. Then I want to discuss it. Play the clip. We are going to the mattresses for these people. We are offering them more accommodation, more chances than we'd offer our own family members, for goodness sakes. And for what? To have Rudy Giuliani go down to Georgia and admit that he lied? Have Jason Miller tell the January 6th commission? Yeah, we all knew it was BS. What? What, what is this? Some of you don't like it when I use the cult word, but when you like being treated like a schmuck, and ask for more, that is a cult. I'm the mark. I'm the sucker. I want to be such. And I resent the person who tries to get me out of that. Those are marks of groupthink, frankly. How many people in this audience sent money to stop the steal three years ago? How many shows did I waste your time talking about this three years ago? How many? I still have not recovered between the election fraud and COVID. I probably have the smallest Facebook following of any major show in this entire industry. I will routinely post things on Facebook, get like two or three comments. It's like Facebook is like, we won't ban you. Because then you'll just you'll you'll whine about it and and generate a bunch of publicity. So we'll just make it that no one sees your material at all. Why? Because I went to the mattresses on COVID and the election fraud issue. Only to have Rudy Giuliani say, "Yeah, I was lying," and Jason Miller say, "Oh, we knew it was all BS." All the best people, Steve. Email me. You know, that's why here on the Midas Touch Network, we try to be as evidence and fact-based as the data that exists. That's why we don't just give you our opinions. Here's how I feel. No, it's not about feelings. If your feelings aren't informed by the facts and by the evidence, and an objective reality, not the constant gaslighting. And so we reported here on the Midas Touch Network this document that Rudy Giuliani filed, where Giuliani admits that he was lying, admits that he defamed the Georgia election workers. He admits it in a court document. But then Rudy Giuliani, I think proving the point of this podcaster, Steve Deese, then records himself. Giuliani then makes a video of himself claiming that the news reports that he lied are fake news and that it was actually a good thing that he filed this document. And again, the document speaks for itself, but it's just more gaslighting. Rudy Giuliani and Donald Trump and MAGA Republicans treating their own supporters like schmucks treating their own supporters like the mark that they are. Here, play this clip. This is what Giuliani just did, this video of himself. Play the clip. Number one, Giuliani is cooperating against Trump. Untrue, Giuliani is telling the truth, which is that Trump is entirely innocent. Fake news number two, 
Giuliani admitted that he lied. <laughs> no. Uh, Giuliani, in a lawsuit, in order to reach the merits of the lawsuit, didn't contest the earlier portion of it with a clear statement that that was no admission that it was true or false. Happens all the time in lawsuits. It's called admission arguendo. And of course, only the most dishonest and cheapest of reporters deliberately misunderstand it. So let's make it clear. I have not admitted that I lied at any point. I haven't. And of course, I'm not cooperating against Donald Trump because there's nothing to cooperate about. The man is innocent and they're framing him. And again, a fact-based, evidence-based approach. Look, this is the document that Rudy Giuliani filed here. Pull it up. This is what Giuliani says. Giuliani says, basically, for the purposes of this litigation and deciding the issues and related solely to this litigation, and recognizing that the other defendants have settled, it says, one, Defendant Giuliani concedes solely for the purposes of this litigation and before this court that Defendant Giuliani made the statements of and concerning the plaintiffs, Ruby Freeman and Shea Moss, which include all of the statements that are detailed in plaintiff's amended complaint. And he does not dispute for the purposes of this litigation that the statements carry a meaning that is defamatory, that is defamatory per se. Element one, element two, go to the paragraph two of this declaration by Giuliani, that the statements, the defamatory per se statements were published to third parties. Element three, that for purposes of this litigation, he is admitting that these defamatory per se statements that were published to third parties, three, he says, were false, were false, were such actionable false statements were made. It says such actionable factual statements were false. He's going through and stating all of the elements of a defamation claim. I go on, but, but he's saying it there that it's false. He then also stipulates that the conduct that he engaged in also constitutes intentional infliction of emotional distress. And he stipulates to those elements as well. So then he makes a video and says, I didn't say what I just did. You did. You said it in court. That's what the document is. And to the point that Steve Deese is making, it's like we're the, you know, he's saying that we're the mark. Might as touch, we're not the mark. He's saying that, that MAGA Republicans are the mark of stuff like this. And here he also references Jason Miller. Because Jason Miller, senior person in the Trump campaign, was out there spreading the lies, spreading disinformation. And as Steve D said, people have given all the money to the stop the whatever fake fraud that Donald Trump is talking about and all these things. But, and Jason Miller's pushing that narrative, pushing that narrative. But here you have Jason Miller to the interview to the January 6th committee when he's under oath basically saying that, no, they knew that it wasn't accurate. And here's a video of Miller and all these other Trumpers saying that they knew what they were saying wasn't accurate. Here, play this clip. The bottom line was, we told him there is a five to 10% chance of all of this happening. You can't go two for three. You can't go one for three. You need to win recounts in two states and win a legal challenge in Wisconsin. That has to happen, three for three. And we think realistically there's a five, maybe 10% maybe chance of that happening. I was in the Oval Office, um, and at some point in the conversation, Matt Oskowski, who is the lead data person, was brought on, and I remember he delivered to the president pretty blunt terms uh, that he was going to lose. And that was based, uh, Mr. Miller, on Matt and the data team's assessment of the sort of county by county, state by state results as reported correct you know after the election as of november 7th in your judgment what were the chances of president trump winning the election after that point yes none is it accurate to say that at some point you urged president trump to stop challenging the results of the 2020 presidential election um it's accurate to say that I believed past a certain point, um, once the appropriate legal challenges were pursued, 
um, that it was in everyone's best interest to um, focus on the accomplishments of the administration and preserve the president's legacy um, rather than, um, you know, continue down a path which I believed was uh, was pointless. You know, and look, here, here's the thing. People who knew Donald Trump's reputation in New York knew that anybody he deals with is the mark. Would Donald Trump, yes, Donald Trump has now turned the Republican Party into the MAGA Republican Party, but Donald Trump isn't a Republican. I mean, Donald Trump's a Trumper. He, he's That is now what the MAGA Republican Party has become, the Trump Party. But Trump's just out for Trump. And he will lie, cheat, steal, crime, bankrupt. And that's what he's done his entire life. You know, in, in Atlantic City, the mark where the hard working people whose lives he destroyed, the vendors whose lives he destroyed, the people who consistently destroyed their lives and when he bankrupted. I mean, Donald Trump's being sued on for class actions for multi-level marketing schemes. Everybody's the mark to Donald Trump. He wants to take, take, take and steal, steal, steal. That is just who he is. The whole thing is exploitive. The whole thing is a grift. The whole thing is that. that that's, that's all there is. There's no substance to it other than hate and grift and crime. And so Steve Deese, if you're watching, Steve Deese, if you are listening, look, the bottom line is now do something about it. Now do something about it, okay? If you're out there saying you're the mark, if you're out there recognizing that you're in a cult, do something about it. It's okay. Like, look, it is, it is very difficult to admit that you were taken advantage of the way that you were. I've done a lot of research into cult behavior. I've done a lot of deep, you know, I've spoken to the top experts as part of the research we've done here at the Midas Touch Network. And that's the hardest part because you've made your whole life that identity. So now to admit that you're the mark, the family members and friends and colleagues and everybody who you've alienated, the fear is that you now have to tell them that you were wrong and the shame that comes with it. But don't worry. The shame is sticking with the lie. While it may be difficult to admit it, you've done the first step here. Now it's Let's live a life of truth and reality and objective reality and come to a pro-democracy community where we'll disagree, but fundamentally we're not lying to each other and trying to grift each other and crime. Like we're trying to come up with solutions. Trying, not always succeeding, trying. So I hope you try that out. I'm Ben Micellis from the Midas Touch Network. Hit subscribe. We're on our way to 1.5 million subscribers thanks to your awesome support. Check us out at patreon.com slash Midas Touch. Wherever you get audio podcasts, subscribe to the Midas Touch podcast. Have an excellent day. Hit subscribe on our YouTube channel now. Hey, Midas Mighty. Love this report? Continue the conversation by following us on Instagram, at Midas Touch, to keep up with the most important news of the day. What are you waiting for? Follow us now.